Hello and welcome to part three of the level edge tutorial. Today is going to be a really quick one. I stated before, what I want to do is to try and turn this level edge set into sort of a game. Right now, all we can do is press some uh, objects onto the scene, and that's it. And you know, nothing happens. Now, at the end of this tutorial, what I want to happen is this: you press E, you'll see the editor goes away, the uh, the wolves start moving, and you press E again, the come back to the original positions, and you can carry on. So it's a very simple project, it's going to be quite quick, so we're going to get straight into it. So I'm going to close this down, and what we're going to do is, this is the tutorial project you should have. I want you to go to the project settings, and what we're going to do is go to the input map, and yeah, we want to toggle editor, add that. Uh, new key, press E for editor, or whatever you want to call it, press OK. So now I I've, I know I've hooked up E, so every time I press E, I'll be looking for toggle editor. Now what I'm going to do is I want to go to the project. No, I don't. I want to go to the script even. <laughs> Sorry about that. So make sure you go to the scripts. This is going to be a little bit different. Normally when we have a script, we edit onto a node, but this is not going to be that case. We're going to use the singleton. I'll explain what singleton in a second. So we want to press new, new script, and I'm going to call it global. <clears throat> In fact, we can get rid of all this because we won't mean it, and I'm going to call var playing equals false because by default we're not playing, it's the editor. So press save. And you think, oh, this is about, so we're going to go to our project project settings, we're going to go to our auto load. Now, auto load just means that anything that we put into here will automatically always be loaded into the, into the game. So I'm going to go to, you, it could be a node, it could be a script in our case, it could be. Um, high score list it's got loads of functionality and it'll always be hooked in and I'll show you where it resides. So we're gonna click on this folder, we're gonna to go to our global, we're gonna add it, we're gonna go close. Now that is in our tree. Now you can't see it here but it's directly above main. I can show you this by pressing play. Now you have to go to remote and as you can see this is our list right and above it directly we've got a root and then just before our main we've got our global and this is where our variables being stored now even if we change our current scene the global will always be present so if you want to put anything like high scores your control list anything that's really important that you don't want to lose when you change scene put it there that's perfect use for singletons so let's get carry on um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create it so the wolf can move Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to have it so we can toggle E to turn on and off. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to our tab container. It's a bit of a weird place to put it. I want you to go to if input is action pressed. I'm going to say toggle three. Toggle editor. I'm going to say global. So that's that. Uh, the script we've just called and it knows that it is there because we've just added to singleton dot playing and you see it's got our variable there and then you say not global playing so what's happening there is it's like a switch if global playing was true it, and not true is false if it was false then not false is true so it's like a light switch on and off it's a good way of toggling rather than having to go if this if that so I'm going to say this tab container, which is our, the editor, visible equals not global playing. Same principle, right? So we, when we're playing, when it's true, we want, we want the editor to be hidden. So we're going to say, hey, is the editor true? Then hide. If it's false, then show. So it looks, <coughs> it looks back to front. And we're going to make sure that works. So we can press save. We can press this. And when I press E, the highs, and I press E again, it comes back. Also, what's happening there is the, the mode is changing as well. Now, you'd want to do this in a state machine because this is a really ugly way of doing it, but it's much more simple. And the whole point of this is to explain a very complicated project in the most simplest way I can do. I will do a state machine tutorial in the future because they're vital and I recommend them. Use them as much as, obvious, uh, as possible because it's a really good way of visualizing states. So we're going to carry on. Now what I'm going to do is add the wolf movement. This is going to be really rudimentary. We're going to go to our wolf. So if it would be down here, we double click it. 
we go to the wolf and then we're going to go to our scripts we're going to have a new script and we can just call it wolf oh it's already here let me start that again <laughs> so i'm going to go to <coughs> here and i'm going to say var start pos equals vector two dot zero zero i'm going to go var init equals false and then I'll end this. And here I'm going to say if in it, if fault if in it is false. So the uh, exclamation mark before boolean means false. <coughs> so so this is equal to is the same as saying this. It's just a quicker way of saying of doing that. It's a preference as well. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. I prefer this because it seems quicker and my eye now sees it quicker. So just do whatever is comfortable to you. Don't get, don't let people tell you the way how you should do it. Like, because there's no proper way of doing this. It's just preference. Start pos equals global position. Now, you might be wondering why you're not putting that in already. Well, what happens is when you, when I'm getting the global position, as soon as I place it with the mouse position, it's, doing something and oh it sits to zero zero and I don't know what that is so I know that I can go hey we'll say in the process I know then it exists in the scene so once it exists in the scene I can then say it's the start position which I will call later and then what I'll do is to make sure that it's not always repeating is say equals true so we have initialized so I'm saying hey if this is false do this then say it's true so it can never go so it won't constantly go over and that's a good way of uh, initializing some variables and I'm going to say if we if global plane oops I always do that uh, global positioning dot x plus equal three whatever you want it to be now, this is really reinventing once again I'm doing it as simple as possible you'd have proper logic here but Right now, I'm, I just want to get through this and so you can understand. And we'll do it in simple stages and go up in difficulty. Else, we are not playing. We'd say global position. And oh, we want this to go start to the start position, right? Because, hey, we've just left the editor. Go back to start position. Now, the issue is, is like once again, you want to be doing this in a, in a state machine. This because this is always going to be called. One of these is always going to be called. And you don't want to get in the habit of just letting code constantly calling itself. But for now, we're not going to focus on that. We're going to just make sure that everything is working as the previous project. So what I'm going to do is put three down. You press E, and as you go, and then you press E again, and it goes to start position. So this is the most simplest way I can think about doing this. Um, the next project is I'm actually going to show you how to set up a tiling system not only the tile system I'm going to have it so that you can actually click where you want the tiles to be on your level editor so look forward to that it'll probably be a long project sorry a long uh, tutorial so I look forward to it and I'll see you then take care bye bye